Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we have a ton of new Pokemon information to go over. Starting things off, there's going to be a new shiny Pokemon mystery gift becoming available very, very soon. We have some starter Pokemon final typing hints. We have some leak theories on the legendaries, the gimmick of the Generation 9 games. Loads of stuff to cover today. So if you're excited for the video, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes. The question of the day is what star Pokemon are you going to be picking for Scarlet and Violet? Subscribe if you're brand new ring the notification bell for daily pokemon content with all of that out of the way though let's get into the video and i really hope that you enjoy so starting things off let's take a look at the new shiny pokemon mystery gift that is going to be available very very soon it is a shiny clefairy it is what the uh champion of i think it was the asian tournament um yeah but they used a shiny clefairy and you're going to be able to get this on june the 18th through to june the 19th on pokemon sword and pokemon shield it's actually a shiny this time the last couple of mystery gifts that were like competitively bred and stuff were not shiny, but this Clefairy is shiny. So Cerebi tweeted out saying a shiny Clefairy is set to be distributed to Pokemon Sword and Shield on June the 18th through to June the 19th. And then this is just kind of what it has, it has the Eevee light. Um, and then obviously it's in its Cherish Ball, it's female. And as you can clearly see, it is a shiny Pokemon. You're also going to get it at level 52. This is more information about it though, posted on Nintendo Life. So saying, following on from a few limited uh, time weekend giveaways, the Pokemon Company has now announced another one for Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. This time around, it's a shiny Clefairy at level 50 equipped with the Eevee Light. So according to Cerebi.net, it's the same one used in 2021 at the Asia Players Cup and comes with the move Protect, Helping Hand, Follow Me and Icy Wind. A code, will it, a code for it will be made available between June the 18th and June the 19th later this week via the official Pokemon Facebook pages. So of course, when that code becomes available, I'll probably drop it in a video. But either way, it's going to be everywhere. It's just on the Pokemon Facebook page, but it'll be all over Twitter and everything like that. But yeah, if you want to get yourself a free Shiny Clefairy with an Eevee Light, um, then yeah, I mean, all you have to do is just wait around for this code. Um, I don't know if it's only going to be available up until the June the 19th. I think it is. Um, so you're only going to have a couple of days to do it. And I think it is this weekend as well. Yeah, June the 18th is a Saturday and then the 19th is the Sunday. So yeah, you'll have a couple of days to redeem this. All these mystery gifts that they're dropping recently, like the, the Grim Snarl. Um, they also dropped the Sableye as well. They're literally only keeping them around for a couple of days. So you properly have to be on your game. If you're not on it, you're going to miss it. And, and again, this is a really good one this time because it's a competitively bred shiny Clefairy in the Cherish Ball. You also get a free Eevee Light as well. But anyway, that is the shiny Clefairy that I wanted to go over. Next up, we're going to be talking about this. Um, so again, it's just more information about when the next potential trailer could be for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We've covered it a few times where Pokemon have just been posting things about like visit Alola, visit Kanto, visit Johto, Hoenn, Sinnoh, Unova, Kalos, etc. And they seem to be doing this like every single week. Um, and so that's kind of giving us the idea that they might be dropping some um, information on Generation 9's rumor um, on the 29th or the 28th of June, which also coincides with the potential Nintendo Direct that has also been rumored to be on that date. Um, so yeah, again, it is just a theory at the moment i guess it's just hinting towards things but they are clearly doing some sort of countdown now throughout all the regions the next one will be galar and then of course after that there there's no more to go over so it'll either be the generation 9 one or they'll just stop this kind of hint thing uh, but yeah so silver our post is saying i think i'm going to start sharing these now too because we are very close the Scarlet and Violet region name and Nintendo Direct announcement with Pokemon news in it on the 28th slash 29th of June. Now, again, we're not confirming that this is going to definitely have some information. We haven't even got confirmation that Nintendo Direct is going to be on the 29th or the 28th. It's just been heavily rumored um, to be on that date. And again, it just kind of lines up with when these region kind of names um come to a close so again if there's a nintendo treehouse then i could very well see some new pokemon news there might even be some snippets of pokemon news in the nintendo direct as well they, they don't usually do pokemon information in nintendo directs they could just kind of do their own thing now because pokemon is just that big but at the same time it could very well happen so you know fingers crossed for this date i think two pieces of information for scarlet and violet in june after three months of nothing i think is fair um but again if they do drop some information at the end of june does that mean they're also going to drop some information in july or will they be waiting till august not really sure about that but either way just keep an eye out on this 
potentially could be getting some Pokemon news around the week um, that has the 20th and 29th. But either way, should definitely be getting a Nintendo Direct that week anyway. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to go over is this massive thread by Soul Silver Art talking about the gimmick and stuff um, and, and theories about it. So uh, he says, I've seen a few theories on these four symbols and they could be related, but I think their main purpose slash significance is representing the four other ride forms each legendary gets. This all starts with Ku, who said they each get five forms, the symbols plus the fifth head in the middle. So this is Ku saying, um, still got three bonus information about the two boxes. Yeah, they're VIP mons with secrets. First is the context and explanation for my master's teaser in April the 2nd will be preserved until the coming of the next week. And then he says bonus two, they may look different on the box because they both have and then obviously that was in a different language. You've just seen one of them. And then this person translated it to five forms. So basically he's saying they may look different on the box because they both have five forms. You've just seen one of them. So of course, we've only seen one forms, one of the forms of the legendaries, which is of course um, this, form, uh, this form here, where obviously you've got them on the box art. But again, apparently they're going to have five other forms. But again, they're also talking about these symbols here. Could be to do with alchemy. Could be to do with their other forms, etc. Um, but yeah, this is so silver. I was saying this border shows symbols of all its forms. The fifth middle dragon head is the um, well, yeah, the, fi the fifth is the middle dragon head is the same one we see on the box art standard form. So this one here is Karaidon and Maridon's like normal form, I guess you'd say, which is obviously on the box art. And the other four in the corner seem to symbolize other things. One looks like a wheel, another looks like it's going under a wave, the rest are hard to figure out. Uh, flying and climbing makes sense, like Pocozo speculated here. Please give their tweet a look over, it will help make it click. And then they also go on to say, they look at the actual designs themselves. Coridon has webbing in between two fingers instead of all of his fingers. Its swirling feathers may open up its wings. Maridon's mid fingers have what looks to be a, sh uh, a slot on them, since they may attach to another part of it, and I could go on. There's still more and more uh, on the backstory, but riding seems to be their main feature. But how does this connect to a three type gimmick? I still think the forms will be related to a rainbow. Maybe each form is a different color. I count five on that emoji, another take on them too. So I must add that while I believe they will have these new forms, I agree with Eduardo here. I think they'll use their already existing body parts, which would just be rearranged to create these forms. Maybe at most they'll gain one new body part for each uh, new form like wings. So that could very well happen to be fair, because this person here said, I don't think Game Freak would make five models for one Pokemon in one game. And if they are the transport, we would have to get them really early in the game. Again, there's a lot of up in the air about whether we're going to get these legendaries early, whether they're going to have like pre-evolutions and stuff like that. Um, again, we'll just have to wait and see. But anyway, he goes on to say, look at the box art. We've never had such a big detailed border on any other previous Pokemon game cover. The only one that comes close is Sword and Shields, which had the legendary wolf faces mixed with the sword, rusted sword and shield, rusted shield. These symbol represented the main sword and shield plot as well as Zacian and Zap Zamazenta's crown form changes. So yeah, as you can see on this artwork here for Pokemon Sword and Shield, we have the, the rusted sword and the rusted shield in the background, which again were massive plot points for Pokemon Sword and Shield. It then goes on to say, which is the same thing I think is happening with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Not only that, but this border is fully connected or one with the head of the Scarlet and Violet legendary, almost like the four symbols are coming from their heads. Uh, what really sealed it for me is I hadn't noticed the two wheel parts of the legendaries right underneath the two symbols in the top right and left corners. So they're talking about these things here. So as you can see, there are clear like wheels underneath these symbols. In the, and again, I don't know if this is to do with like the wheel that they have on their chest. I'm guessing it is. Um, but yeah, this is clearly something like the, these symbols in the corner. And, and again, the fact that the wheels are there just kind of makes that even more obvious. Um, but yeah, it says right underneath the two symbols in the top right and left corners, as well as spikes and scales on Coridon's border and electricity around Maridon's border. So again, we kind of confirmed as well that the dragon fighting typing is going to be Coridon and then dragon and electric is going to be Maridon. And again, that's also, I guess, shown even more in the kind of lightning and stuff around here. And then I guess there's isn't really anything to do with fighting, but you can clearly see that this is like an electric bolt and an electric kind of symbol and stuff like that. Then goes on to say, I either believe that the four rides will be standard, fly, ride, surf, climb, or instead of climb, I believe the last one could be space slash dimensional travel. These are listed from left to right in this image. This is also shown in the legendaries reveal from the trailer. I, again, I, I mean, you could also have like diving or like digging and stuff like that. Like uh, some people have said it'd be really cool if we had like a digging feature, which could allow you to go in the ground, which again, would take a lot more programming and stuff, but at the same time, if it's a massive open world, we could have some sort of like underground situation going on as well, which could allow you to have secret bases and stuff because they botched it so much in BDSP. It would be nice for them to kind of rectify it again in, uh, in Scarlet and Violet, actually make it really uh, look really good. 
Anyway, they're going to say the camera starts with us flying, uh, then it goes down into the crevasse uh, for riding, and then into the water for surfing, then climbing the mountain to the reveal for climbing. So again, it does make sense. Like it shows them in the sky and the climbing. Uh, well, not the climbing. This one is the um, yeah, riding, and then into the water for surfing, and then climbing the mountain. So again, it, it does make sense. And, and Pokemon are smart like that. So they're kind of dropping hints throughout the trailer when it builds up to the legendaries. Uh, but my big theory for this is like in Breath of the Wild or another open world RPG, we will get the legendaries earlier on in the game. Only as a ride not usable in battle until much later. And we will need to go through dungeons slash bosses slash gyms to unlock each of these emblems slash new ride abilities throughout our journey slash exploration. Maybe once we have all four, we can then actually catch the legendary to use in battle. And this is just quote retweeting saying, I would imagine we wouldn't be able to use them in battle until we reached a new level requirement. So maybe if there are gyms in this game, you have to get a certain amount of gyms and then the legendary is like, oh yeah, you're not too bad. Let me, let me, let me battle with you and stuff like that. But instead we just have them on loan from the professors and use them solely as ride Pokemon, much like the ride Pokemon Legends Arceus. Then goes on to say, now this of course does not completely discredit other theories about exactly what these symbols mean, whether it is alchemy or navigational tools, and actually the latter almost supports my theories because we will be navigating the Scarlet and Violet world on our new legendary friends. This is also a really great take on what the five forms could be. I'm not too sure there will be a crossing like pre-evolution, but there's always a chance. So yeah, this is obviously the final form here, which is Karida Maridan. You have the air vehicle form, the water vehicle form, the land vehicle form, the normal form, and then the pre-evolution. So again, it could be the five forms, but I feel like this is a form as well. I feel like Ku counted this as a form, so you'd have to knock one out, which I guess would be the normal form. So we could have the pre-evolution form, which is one, the water, which is two, air, which is three, land, which is uh, four, and then the final form, which is five. But again, that also doesn't include climbing and stuff, so how does that come into the equation? Anyway, that's the big theory on like the legendaries and stuff and the gimmick and everything like that. Uh, the next thing we're going to be talking about is this little post here by Nintendo, um, who says, Sprigatito loves all the attention it can get and deserves so as its trainer uh, be careful letting it see you give attention to other pokemon and then soul silver art quote retweeting this saying that's very dark this is kind of what a lot of cats do to be fair um but it still kind of makes you like jealousy i guess is you know a bad trait um and stuff like that because i mean we've we've seen that sprigatito is a jealous pokemon because it says it on the website so i guess jealousy jealousy is, is a bad trait to have um and again I, I think there's other things on the website as well that kind of promote that dark typing it has already been leaked that sprigatito will be grass dark but again they are hinting at it with little things like this there's also a massive hint to quaxley's final typing on the website we covered that in a few uh, days ago talking about how it's like got really powerful legs and is really good for kicking and stuff like that so that kind of gives quaxley's water fighting type hint right there uh, but this one kind of helps just visualize the fact that sprigatito is going to be grass dark and then again, Fue Coco is going to be Fire Ghost. So if they do post something else about Fue Coco, it might have some sort of like ghost symbolization um, there. But again, just a little bit more information on the starters there. But I mean, we already know what the typing is going to be because Ku's already leaked them. But it's just nice to know that Pokemon are also kind of posting things that are kind of pointing us in those kind of directions. So that's all that. The last thing we're going to do today is cover this rumor here for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. This is just a random 4chan uh, rumor. I thought I'd kind of post these at the end of the videos and stuff just as a little bit of a... I don't know it's just a nice send off of the video and see if you know any of them do end up being true this was posted on sunday though on the 12th uh, and it was posted by el spoils and it says scarlet and violet spoils so he says the villain teams are team evolve and team devolve uh, team evolve is exclusive to scarlet and led by professor turo who believes that humanity and pokemon are doomed to destroy themselves and each other due to their primal nature unless they find a way to force change upon them. And then Team Devolve is exclusive to Violet and led by Professor Seder. So kind of jumping on the whole evil professor situation there. Again, we don't know that they're going to be evil, but there's definitely more than meets the eye for them because they're, they're clothed in like, like prehistoric clothes or like futuristic clothes. Who believes that humanity is doomed to destroy themselves and Pokemon due to humanity's overzealous desires for advancement and want to send the world back to the Stone Age. And then the new gimmick is primal and advanced evolutions, basically the same as mega evolutions. Again, they could be jumping on the whole Riddler Koo situation because Riddler Koo did say that, you know, there was going to be some sort of like, he didn't really come out and say it. He just was replying to someone talking about mega evolutions and he was like, no, I'm not going to say like, there's nothing about mega evolutions in the game. So that kind of makes us think that the gimmick could have something to do with not necessarily mega evolutions, but like new kind of forms. And so this person could just be jumping on that. Primal turns a Pokemon into a more primal and savage version of itself, and Advanced turns a Pokemon into a more refined and futuristic version of itself. 
again this if this did turn out to be true not not necessarily this 4chan post but if we were going to get like new forms for pokemon it'd be one of those situations where not every single pokemon would get it because they're not going to give a primal form to like every single pokemon it's going to be a select few like your charizards your mewtwo's maybe the starter pokemon stuff like that notable pokemon i know that have such forms are as followed so pikachu's getting both electric rock is the caveman themed and then electric steel is a cyborg metal tail and visor we have lucario having an advanced form which is steel psychic Zorok having a primal form which is dark fighting i'm not 100 sure if that's going to be true because we have already seen hisui and zoro in a trailer well hisui and Zorok. i know that we've already kind of gone over the fact that they said that that's only going to be available for a pokemon home but again i don't know if Zorok's going to get another form in this game and then gengar's going to have an advanced form which is ghost normal computer virus themed that would be really cool tyranitar is going to get both so rock dark for his cape and form and then steel dark um, which is obviously just kind of talking about Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla themed. And then Colossal uh, is having an advanced form, which is still flying. And then Sleeker, wind powered theme. Starter's final evolutions are Grass Fighting, um, which again, already going against the leak typings that we have. So for whatever reason, if Koo is wrong, um, yeah, apparently Tarzan Cat for um, uh, Sprigatito is going to be Grass Fighting, Fire Ground for Fue Coco, and then Water Ice for Quaxley. And then legendary types are dragon fighting and dragon electric. We already know that. Third is a green two-headed dragon that represents fate. So again, just a little funny 4chan rumor to post at the end of the video. I might start doing this every now and again. Um, but yeah, I haven't covered 4chan stuff in a while. So it is always fun to go back and see what they're all talking about. But anyway, though, that is going to be everything for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. A little bit of a longer one than usual. I might start making them a little bit longer um, just so there's more information to get into you guys. Um, but yeah, if you did enjoy, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes. Answer the comment question of the day as well. Which starter Pokemon are you going to be choosing for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? I'm going to try and reply to a lot more comments now as well. Uh, subscribe if you're brand new. Ring the notification bell. It's everything from me, though. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And until next time, peace.